Ladies, gentlemen, and travelers of all ages, Last Epoch has now been properly in its release cycle for a hefty bit of time now, and as more time passes, more people push to further and further sections of the endgame for this game, with a lot of people now being at least at base level empowered monoliths, so 100 corruption. As you progress and push up those corruption numbers to increase your chances at higher quality loot dropping to make yourself stronger, you might find that your build could start to chug and stutter at certain points. Maybe it's a matter of defensive issues, some certain enemies start to just sort of one-shot you out of nowhere. Maybe you're finding your damage isn't keeping pace with the increasing health of higher corruption enemies and it's just sort of slowing you down instead of speeding up your farm in general. Or maybe you're not here because your current build has any notable issues, so much as you just want to see what you could be missing out on, what you could be doing instead. So today we're going to go over what is, in my opinion, the best build for each class in the proper deep end game of Last Epoch, as of this point in the release cycle of the game, and we will do it by class as well, just for the sake of it too. First up then, let's start with Acolyte, and I'm also going to present these masteries in strongest to weakest order within their base class, just because we might as well, and the strongest Acolyte mastery and build is just far and away Warlock, and there are a couple of nearly equal power builds that focus around one bug, and it's worth noting that this bug is specifically planned to be changed in the next beta patch for the game when that hits, but this ranking is based around right now, and this bug is an incredibly big deal at this moment, which is the Vampiric Pools node in Profane Veil. It consumes minions to grant you ward, it's supposed to give you 4% of the minion's health as ward, but it is instead giving 40%, giving Warlocks a way to generate over 100 100,000 ward extremely frequently and consistently, covering pretty much all survival concerns as a result of that. Then the rest of the build can sort of go two ways, but the one that I think has a higher ceiling is Self Ignite Torment, which is using a couple of uniques to cause you to apply Ignite to yourself, then also give yourself a high flat spell damage boost per Ignite stack that is on you. Combine that with snapshotting the Torment applying to an enemy, and you have a damage over time curse with 200 or higher bonus flat spell damage, even outside of the other supporting parts of the build. It's just extremely, extremely strong, hard to give an actual ceiling to it, and for anyone interested, we do have a version of both this and the next build on the channel itself. Second then is the Necromancer Mastery, and it's worth saying that while this is weaker than Warlock, it is still one of the strongest builds in the whole game. We talked about this the last time we went over the strongest builds for Mastery, it's just getting better over time. It's the Wraith Lord build. Wraith Lord's Harbor, the unique to make summon Wraith, create a big strong minion that fires off necrotic beams and consumes other minions to boost its own damage and health. Pair that with a bunch of minion buffs so he has 100% crit rate and permanent haste, things like that, then just build pure survival for the player themselves, and this is one of the top builds in the whole game right now. Third up we have the Lich, and Lich is the best third mastery at the moment, by which I mean if we are ranking the masteries of each class from 1 to 3, this is the highest overall ranking bottom of a class compared to the others, which is just to say that Lich may be last among Acolyte, but it is still quite strong, and the build itself is a volatile zombie potion bomber. It works around reperforms and 8 damage and survival boosts as well as other parts of Lich to boost the damage in general, but the main source of damage are volatile zombies, and the main way that you summon them is not through the raw skill, but instead from the experimental belt affix to make consuming a potion summon a small horde of these zombies. The actual raw offense and survival of this is actually pretty potent, but the main problem is that because it relies on potions to do at least its proper damage, you are sort of limited to your potion count, but you'll reach extremely high corruption before that even really becomes a factor, honestly. Then let's move on to our second base class, Mage, and his top mastery is unsurprisingly the Rune Master, whose best build that I've seen so far and since release is a Lightning Frostclaw variant. I've been working on my own version of this over the last few days, but the main idea of this is that Frostclaw builds for Rune Master especially get absolutely just insane ward generation. The problem is that it tends to cost so much mana that it is hard to permanently cast without taking some losses in actual damage unless you go Lightning, because Lightning Frostclaw specifically has its own mana cost reduction nodes that solve this problem. Stack spell crit chance and multiplier on top of that, apply some buffs to yourself with Lightning Blast, then just fire off Lightning Frostclaw like a madman for insane ward generation and damage. It's really just pure fun with a high ceiling. The second best mastery for Mage right now is going to be Sorcerer then, and the build that they are doing it with is based around Spark Charges. From a lot of what I've seen with this, it is sort of a similar concept to Rune Master's Lightning Frostclaw, just a much lower power version of it. That said, it is still reasonably powerful, so worth using if you're playing this mastery. Third slot for Mage is the Spellblade, and it just sort of is lacking the synergies that the other two masteries have. The best build I've come across for this is a Frostbite Shadow Strike build, where the focus is applying maximum stacks of Frostbite to enemies as quickly as possible, then just watching them tick down while you dodge attacks. It's definitely pretty good, but it hits a hard limit of power before the other two masteries best builds for this. Next base class of the day then, let's talk Primalist, whose best performing mastery is the Druid. And the build that I've seen doing the most work for them is a Lightning Swarm Blade setup, with the general idea being taking advantage of Swarm Blade form and staying in it permanently while not only surrounding yourself with a tornado, but also firing off lightning tornadoes outwards towards the enemies as well. This build is generally pretty strong as an all-rounder, with the damage I would say falling off a bit before the survival 
survivability does. Then for the second Primalist Mastery, it's actually extremely close, and it's going to be Beastmaster, who I would say is actually pretty equivalent to Druid. They are super close right now, at least with these builds, and the best Beastmaster build going around at the moment, the cycle is actually Poison Scorpion, which is quite cool. Using the Scorpion Companion to apply and buff loads of poison stacks to slowly burn your enemies down, while you just sort of survive with super Psy health, regen, and armor surrounding it defensively. Then third, we have the Shaman, and Shaman is in a pretty decent place too. Extremely survivable, but the damage just sort of drops off sooner than the other two masteries for the class. The best build that I've seen for it is just a slightly revamped version of the classic concept Thorn Totem build that this class has used for ages, even before the proper release of the game. It's extremely fun to have. You just make yourself super tanky, make the totems super strong, place them on the ground, and then just dodge incoming damage while the totems do most of the heavy lifting. Like the Beastmaster, the survivability mostly just comes from health, armor, and regen, as opposed to our first two classes where most of the time survivability comes from just how big of a number of ward that you can get and how consistent your ward generation is compared to your ward decay. So Primalist just gets to build to be big and beefy instead of having a barrier to deflect it all away. Then for the next base class, alphabetically, let's go with Rogue, and its strongest mastery is without a doubt the Falconer. New in 1.0, and as tends to happen with new things, players will discover things that weren't found in QA testing, and these bugs will result in hilariously overpowered interactions such as the Smoke Bomb, Dive Bomb, Shadow Daggers combo builds that have been just running rampant around the place, with the main synergy being a combo that makes Dive Bombs that hit Smoke Bombs also trigger a Shadow Falcon if there is a Shadow Clone in the radius of the Smoke Bomb. So every time you Dive Bomb, you actually do a fairly large number of Dive Bombs at the same time thanks to these Shadows, which both generates ridiculous amounts of ward and does incredible damage. So you can't really ask for a whole lot better than that, honestly. After that, we have the Marksman, actually, as the second best build for this class right now, and it's very specifically because of the Lightning Blast build that's been going around with Jelker's Blast Knife, which makes Detonating Arrow count as a melee skill and give it other bonuses. But then you change it to Lightning and play around with Detonating Arrow Lightning Explosions, specifically by using Explosive Trap. It has a node which auto-triggers Detonating Arrow around the trap's radius when it explodes with a specific node. The Blast Knife Unique makes any enemy that is hit by the Detonating Strike's melee variant get a Detonating Strike Arrow stuck into them. So this version of the Explosive Trap actually applies one Detonating Strike to each enemy in the radius with this combination with this synergy, which is quite silly. Then you also just make it lightning damage to have the damage of it chained to nearby enemies, so essentially this combo just makes Explosive Trap apply a secondary explosive that scales with the amount of enemies before exploding once again, and this happens every time that you throw a trap out, so it's genuinely quite offensively strong for mobbing, and it even does bosses relatively fast too to a certain extent, though it is a little bit less tanky than some of the other masteries in the game, so while it can genuinely speed farm as well as just about any other build in the game does, it does have a lower corruption farming limit as far as its proper peak, and survivability is definitely a big deal in the end game for this game. Then the final mastery that we'll talk about for Rogue is Blade Dancer. It's not bad by any means, it's just not in an exceptional state right now compared to its competitors, and the main build for this is similar to what was used before patch 1.0 as well, which is focused around Shadow Daggers and Shadow Cascade, specifically using Shadow Cascade to auto-cast Shadow Daggers so that you just specialize the hell out of daggers and then make the rest of the build around having Cascade trigger as frequently in as many different places in as large an area as possible, as it fires off daggers from every Shadow Clone that you have up, and this works for mobbing by spreading the shadows out before casting Cascade, it works for bosses by grouping the shadows up and overlapping them before you cast Shadow Cascade, it's just a fundamentally very solid build all around, but with a survivability ceiling compared to a lot of the other builds that we've talked about today. Then for our final base class, we have the Sentinel, and the best mastery without any doubt here is going to be Paladin, especially with the addition of Healing Hands, Paladin has really just sort of become an absolute juggernaut since the release of 1.0. The main build that is pushing the real heights of content right now is a Smite Healing Hands combo build, where you essentially just make yourself so unbelievably tanky that it becomes difficult to die even at high corruption, which is really crazy, and even the damage itself is pretty respectable. This is just a really meaty beefcake of a build, capable of shoving its face through anything that you could ask it to currently in the game. Following that, we have Void Knight, and poor Void Knight is in a bit of an awkward spot right now. The main build that I've seen managing to work for this mastery is mostly just known as Healing Hands Void Knight, because offensively it's pretty standard for the mastery, high crit and void damage shenanigans, erasing strike, void cleave, the classics, but then it also works in Healing Hands for the defense, which makes it extremely difficult to kill, even on its own, even without the other parts of the things buffing its survivability. So what you end up with is an extremely tanky character with an unfortunate damage ceiling, but it still definitely can function up to like 500 corruption if you want it to, which is much more than an average player will ever really have issues with, so it's really good anyways, and the best that Void Knight really has at the moment for sure. Then our final mastery of the day is the Forge Guard. Nothing changes really for this mastery in patch 1.0 or since, sadly, and the result is that it can get unbelievably, ridiculously survivable and tanky and defensive, but it just can't really achieve particularly impressive damage in any way. There just aren't enough synergies available to 
to make it crazy as some of the other classes get. That said, if you like the sound of just covering yourself in armor, the build that you generally want to use right now is going to be Rive Focused. It's the only real one that I've seen manage well above like 200 corruption without farming slowing to an absolute crawl getting there. And that just about does it then everyone. The best build for each mastery with a general focus on corruption climbing is that is simply what I imagine most people to be working towards at this stage post proper release. I'm having a great time doing so myself. I've been playing three separate characters into multiple hundreds of corruption each and just seeing the differences is something that I find quite intriguing myself. But hopefully no matter what you play, you've enjoyed this video going over some of the best builds in the whole game. Whether you want to actually try these out for your specific mastery or you just wanted to see the sort of best that the different masteries could achieve. Either way really. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.